Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm a hospital pharmacist. I've been getting a lot of questions about pharmacy, so I wanted to dedicate this video to answering all your questions. All right, let's get started. Okay, first question I have is, what country do you work in? Well, I work in the United States and I am located in the West Coast. Do grades play an important role in getting a hospital job? For me personally, I don't think so. I think grades play a more important role in getting a residency. But in terms of getting a job, they just need to see, you know, do, do you have a PharmD degree? Um, I think experience is more important. So if you have residency, that's going to give you much more um, competitive edge compared to someone that doesn't have residency. Of course, it's not absolutely required, but hospitals would like to have that additional experience. What are ambulatory care pharmacists and what do they do? Not many people are aware of what ambulatory care pharmacists are. In terms of AM care, it's more clinic based. Meaning, so let's say when you visit your doctor, you know, a patient could have multiple comorbidities. They could have diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol, and there's just a long laundry list of issues that, you know, the doctor can't address in a short 20 minute, 15 minute appointment. So what they do is that they'll refer their patients to specialized AMCARE pharmacists. So for example, um, during my residency, we had a cholesterol clinic. And this was run all by clinical pharmacists that specialize in hyperlipidemia. So with this a clinic, all the doctors refer their complex hyperlipid patients to us. You know, sometimes they're so complex and they're not able to manage this specific disease state. So they'll refer them to over to our clinic. And there's many, many different types of Amcare pharmacists. There's um, diabetes Amcare pharmacists, there's hypertension, there's renal clinic, there's cholesterol, there's heart failure. Um, Anything you can name of, there's an AmCare pharmacist in that field. So all these clinical pharmacists are able to adjust medications that's in their scope of practice. So for an AmCare pharmacist in cholesterol clinic, they can just um, they can adjust and titrate any cholesterol medication. What was your major in undergrad? Well, here's a list. Here, um, take a guess, and I'll reveal the answer. Yes, so you are correct. Just kidding, I don't know if you picked the right one, but my major was biochemistry. So for me, I just had no idea coming into undergrad. I didn't know what major I picked. I figured I like chemistry, I like biology, why not combine the two? Was this particular major helpful in pharmacy school? I would say yes, it was very helpful for me in pharmacy school. That's pretty much the bread and butter of pharmacy school. Um, however, you know, I went to UCLA and that major was um, notoriously very, very difficult and I would not do it again. <laughs> um, I think there's other easier majors that you can do that will still allow you to fulfill all the requirements. So I don't think you need to torture yourself, but you know, it was very helpful when I got into pharmacy school because I feel like I had a solid basic foundation going in. Did you take any gap years? No, I did not. So I, when I graduated from college, I went straight to pharmacy school, meaning during my fourth year of undergrad, I was you know, applying for pharmacy school. I was going through interviews um, during the whole process during my last year. What is your opinion on UOP's pharmacy program? So for those that don't know what UOP is, it's one of the pharmacy schools on the West Coast and they have an accelerated program where um, it's, I don't remember the details, but instead of doing undergrad for four years and then going to a pharmacy school for three to four years, you go straight into a PharmD program that's like two or three years of undergrad and then you get like another two, three years of PharmD. So it's much more accelerated. Um, the only caveat with that is that you don't get a bachelor's degree. Um, so if you do this route, you have to be 100% sure you want to do pharmacy because if you change your mind, you can't go elsewhere. So their question was, what do you think of their program? Which one is better, taking a straight path to PharmD in five to six years versus four years of undergrad and three to four years of pharmacy school? Well, honestly, let me just tell you, I, 
had no idea about UOP or those type of programs until it was too late. Um, honestly, I, I'd say go for the straight path if you are 100% um, sure you want to do pharmacy. I don't regret my choice. I love, love my experience at UCLA and I would never take that back. Um, for me, I think it was a nice experience to have um, either way, just because I wanted to take my time, enjoy the undergrad years. Um, I did get some experience during that time and it took my time to really make sure I wanted to pursue pharmacy. The only fear with the straight path, like programs like UOP is that, you know, if you change your mind during that time, it can be very difficult. Um, because you're making a dedication to this profession right out of high school. My co-resident actually went to UOP and he's a solid clinical pharmacist and he's so young and <laughs> it's, I'm so jealous that he's done so early. So if I knew about it, I probably would have applied there first. What would you say to someone who's already planning on starting pharmacy school, but is afraid of taking on the economic burden? How would you recommend paying them back? Okay, this is a really good question and I have to be completely quite honest. Um, it's a really tough decision to make. So for me, I am first generation daughter of immigrants and I did not get any help from my family. So I have a lot, a lot, a lot of loans. So I think the economic burden is what prevents me from giving a resounding yes to say, oh, I highly recommend pharmacy for everyone because you know that's a big burden to have. So for me going in, I knew from the beginning I had to strategically, strategically plan out my career to make sure that I can somehow pay these loans back or figure out a way that's manageable. So for me, I knew from the beginning I wanted to get a hospital job at a nonprofit so that I can be eligible for a loan forgiveness program. Um, for this specific program, if you work there for 10 years, paying the income-based payment plan, whatever is remaining after those 10 years, they will forgive it all. So I found that that's the best strategy, but the whole, only hard part is that, you know, jobs aren't guaranteed. So that's the scary part. So I think it's ultimately up to your decision, but you know, I, Sometimes I think about it and what if I did choose a career where I didn't have to take on those loans? Um, I'd be much more financially stable sooner. But you know, at the same time, I love, love, love my job and I'm very happy. So I can't tell you yes or no, but you do have to you know, sit back and really think about that. How did you memorize different drug mechanisms, drugs, brand names, etc.? Yeah, so with pharmacy school, there's a lot to memorize. It's it's hard. I went through, I trialed every different method of studying and I found the best way is just repetition, repetition and teaching someone. So your brain um, requires repetition to really memorize and recall information. And it's when you're teaching someone, it's forcing your brain to organize the concepts and understand it much better because you know in order to teach you have to know the topic really really well i would just have study sessions with my friends you know after we've all learned the material we'll just go to a cafe and just quiz each other ask each other questions and that's i think that's the best way honestly i'm about to start appy rotations what would you recommend to do prior to rotations and what should i bring that's a good question let me, let me grab my note. i highly highly recommend you just go to your local dollar store get these like little photo album booklets and let's say if you have um an am care rotation print out like top am care guidelines you know diabetes cholesterol just have it ready on hand print them out like even your lectures and just have them all in here so this is like you know, the diabetes flow chart, medications to treat, summary of trials. So these I got from a mixture of different guidelines or just like um, my lectures. And I always had these on hand. So if I had any questions I wasn't sure about or I needed to refer to the ADA guidelines or something like that, I just grabbed this from my white coat, flipped through it, and 
that had the answers. I heard it's better to let your preceptor know that you will need a letter of rec for residency during rotation. Did you do this? If so, what's the best way to ask a preceptor that you just met? Yes, that is what I did. So generally when you first meet your preceptor, um, you know, they're going to go over, break down the rotation with you, have semi a slight orientation, and oftentimes they'll ask you, so what are your interests? Um, you know, what's your plans? What's your goals for this rotation? And that's when I'll kind of squeeze it in. I'll say, you know, my main goal is to apply for residency this year. I really want to become a clinical hospital pharmacist, et cetera, et cetera, Amcare pharmacist, whatever your interests are. Plant that seed and let them know, hey, I'm interested in residency. Um, if you want to be more direct, you can tell them that you're interested in residency. And, you know, if you do well, at the end of the rotation, you might ask for a letter recommendation. So you can go either way. I think sometimes I just tell them I'm interested in residency just so that they know. And towards the end of the rotation where I feel like, okay, I think I'm really confident in my skills. I did really well during this rotation. So usually at the end of rotation, they'll have some sort of evaluation. They'll discuss to view how you did at the end of the rotation. And that's when I'll bring up, oh, um, at the beginning of the uh, rotation, I mentioned that I was interested in residency. I would love to get a letter of recommendation for you. Would you rec be willing to highly recommend me for residency? So the key here is highly recommend. When preceptors fill out the letter of recommendation, they have to check off recommend or highly recommend or do not recommend. So your goal is to have all your preceptors or whoever's writing your recommendations to check off highly recommend. As a preceptor, what do you look for in a pharmacy student? Because I'm a float pharmacist, I float around different areas of the hospital and there are times where I have to precept pharmacy students. So for me, I, I love it when pharmacy students take initiative. I found that the best students are the ones that you don't need to ask them to do things. They'll go out of their way to do it on their own and I think that's just fantastic. Is there anything specific that the hospitals look for when selecting us for residents? So, Every pharmacy program, residency program is very different. Sometimes there's things that's out of your control. So the ones that are in control, you know, like grades, you know, um, your letter of recommendation, blah, blah, your application, all that. So in addition to that, they're also seeing if your personality fits with their pharmacy department. Because if you think about it, the ultimate goal is that, you know, they're training you for a whole year. They would love to hire you on if a position opens. So in their minds, they have to also think, will this person get along with all the pharmacists here. Don't take it too harshly or don't be too upset if you don't get a specific residency um, for a specific program. It might just be that, you know, it just wasn't a good fit. So in addition to, you know, personality and see if they can match well with the department, they also look forward to see if someone is uh, strong clinically. So, you know, it doesn't have to mean necessarily grades. It just means their ability to have a good thought process, work things out, think things through and make solid decisions. That's why a lot of residency programs have some sort of case-based questions, some kind of scenario-based question and what they would do in those situations. Of course, um, every residency program is different. So I'm just speaking from my opinion and what I think they would look for. Um, as a resident, I got to be a part of the interview process, so it's very interesting to hear and see what the, the other side is like. One thing you would change about pharmacy. So for me, I the reason I do my YouTube videos is because I felt like there's not enough representation about hospital pharmacy. Sometimes when I tell people I'm a pharmacist, they automatically assume CVS or Walgreens, and I tell them, no, I, I work at a hospital, and I'll just get blank stares and they'll be a little confused. Like I can tell on their face, they'll go, oh. But you know, you can see they don't know what I do. So, and of course, you know, you see TV shows like Grey's Anatomy and um, you know, all those medical TV shows, they don't really mention a hospital pharmacist. They don't really include us in there. And I wish they would. So I would like to have more representation of hospital pharmacy. That's one thing I would change. I think another thing I would change is that you know, I don't know how it is on, on the other side of the East Coast at all, but um, specifically in the West Coast in the profession of pharmacy, they keep churning 
out more and more pharmacy schools. And the issue is that we're having more and more pharmacists, but you know the amount of jobs, it's staying the same. So that's one thing that I usually tell people that are interested in pharmacy to you know, keep that in mind and really think things through, like, do you still want to pursue this profession? Just because, you know, I have to be 100% honest, you know, it can be a little difficult sometimes um, finding jobs, but I mean, I was very fortunate enough to be able to find one. And um, a couple of my friends were able to find ones too. So it's not impossible. It just might be a little difficult. And then last question, do you have any regrets? So I am very fortunate to have gotten my dream job straight out of residency. So I am a little biased, but I don't have any regrets. Um, you know, the amount of loans, yeah, it's a lot, but I am hoping the loan forgiveness program would work for me and help me out, but you know, we'll see. Um, maybe I'll make a video 10 years from now and have good news. And I'll be really sad if it doesn't work out. <laughs>